Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is a study after John Francis Murphy called Afternoon Light. Um, I have a date on this. He did he did his uh, painting in 1887. Uh, mine is an 8x12, and I painted it on some hardboard, which has been primed with two layers of transparent gesso so I'm not painting just on raw hardboard um, as pleasant as that might be um, I put on two layers of gesso I like to sand in between layers it is a nice smooth surface and uh, lately I've just taken the painting on smooth after lots of years of painting on textured boards um, and what I do is basically just create the texture with my brush strokes it's a little more work but you know it's where my head's at right now um, we're doing our our underpainting slash drawing right now, and uh, I'm doing that with a bit of um, uh, you know what I'm using is uh, some Van Dyke brown, and I looked I looked it up on the tube base. Uh, this is Gamblin's version. Now the original Van Dyke brown, very interesting. It would be uh, maybe something called asphaltum or whatever, kind of a tar, and not good, not good to paint with because it. Um, it creates an unstable um, painting. Uh, uh, it doesn't dry properly, and uh, yeah, I mean you can have some some good results, but you could also have a lot of bad things happen. So um, you'll see um, people like um, or companies like Gamblin uh, create uh, you know their version of it. Their version of it is uh, burnt sienna, straight up burnt sienna, PBR seven, uh, mixed with bone black. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a little playing with that and uh, I kind of liked it because you had this like little undertone of red um, in the previous painting I'd used uh, a lot of times I used burnt umber which has red in it but not maybe as deep a note you know um, so I was playing with that um, one of the reasons why I went ahead and uh, and used that in this painting is I on this particular day I knew I was going to um, what I did was I mixed all my colors, which by the way, that whole color mixing session is in the members area. You will see a link for that under the video. There'll be two links under the video. One where I'm going to have this for sale in my store. And thank you to those of uh, you that have been uh, supporting me that way. It's really great to get some support, um, especially you. We all know how the world is right now. So uh, anything you can do to help keep uh, this artist going is, is certainly appreciated. Um, and the other way, of course, uh, you got the members area. There's another link right below that, and uh, that's um, going to give you the full-length video. In this case, just under three hours, but um, a good one to watch, I think. Uh, you know, it's not like I'm dawdling, you know. Um, but that that video would contain the entire color mixing session, which uh, you know, I break the color, I, I break the painting down, and maybe it's 10 to uh, 12, uh, 14. Uh, basic colors and mix those colors prior to jumping in and uh, in this case a lot of times I do my drawing uh, slash underpainting uh, first but in this case I did the color mixing in the morning and then came in and did the uh, the drawing it just jumped right in and that's why I was mentioning I don't mind a little bit of black in there now um, because I know I was going to go right into doing my color um, if I it was going to be a case where I was going to wait a, a little while after doing the drawing slash underpainting, uh, I would have just gone with burn number, uh, which would be a much faster dryer. Uh, the problem with using the black or anything with the black in it uh, is it's kind of a slower dryer. And um, if it's in the process of drawing, you could actually be removing your, under, your, your drawing uh, slash underpainting layer. Uh, with color as you're painting it's really a mess so anyway um, I thought a lot of you know who uh, good old John Francis Murphy was but I found a nice bio I don't know if I've read this before I mean we've been doing this a while uh, speaking of we just cracked 4,000 members so yay you know it's only taken uh, hmm, seven years <laughs> but I'm not you know I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled because uh, I've done that doing you know what I want to do the way I want to do it and sharing and helping um, in the way that I'm able to do sustainably um, a lot of people start channels and they get real 
teachy and this and that, but they're not able to keep it going. But uh, I've been, uh, you know, very lucky, very fortunate that, um, uh, you know, I've, I've been able to build up my channel and do it in such a way that supports my art and, uh, you know, reflects my personality, you know. Anyway, let's read about John and John Francis Murphy. And now John Francis Murphy, 1853 to 1921. That's a decent uh, lifespan in the 70s. <sighs> Here's, here we go. John Francis Murphy, a self-taught artist, once said, I paint the woods I saw as a boy. The woods he referred to were those in and around his hometown of Oswego, New York. As an established member of New York City's artistic milieu later in life, he would return to the countryside for eight months out of the year. During that time, however, he did not paint. Instead, he absorbed the details of the landscape and produced his artwork from memory during the winter months, sacrificing the accuracy of specific details in exchange for the beauty of color, line, feeling, and mood. Wow, I'd like to comment on that, but let's keep moving. Murphy spent summers from 1887 to Arkville, New York in the Catskill Mountains and the presence of Alexander Wyant between and and the presence of the, 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 had a pronounced influence on Murphy's development as a tonalist. His compositions characteristically combine observation and memory. The forms dissolve into each other as quickly viewed in a passing glance, envelops in, in an atmospheric haze. Mercy Murphy first exhibited with the National Academy of Design in 1876, was elected an associate member in 1885, and a full member, blah, 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 we don't care. So he was, what we do care about is how beautiful his art is, and how it's really stood the test of time. Now, i had done a study of this before, um, as a 5 by 7 way back, probably in the 100 days, I, I love this painting, and I love the way he played the reds off the greens. Um, it's, it was really nice to be able to do it as a 8 by 12 I had to do a little um, scaling with the uh, with his reference uh, with with his painting to uh, to get the proportions right um, one thing I mean if you're going to go after painting uh, a study after a master like this um, you cannot get real tight and tweaky uh, if you're doing a study after someone that paints very expressively as John Francis Murphy did. Now, not all his paintings have this really loose flowing uh, brush fracture, um, but in a case like that, you really just need to take inspiration from the reference image and and you got to flow, you got to move uh, like he would move. and. Um, pull things in but you can't match them stroke for stroke because what will happen is everything will get really tight and uh, you just lose the plot it won't even feel like his work when you're done um, I am a little disappointed with the uh, um, some of the well no actually I'm pretty thrilled with this painting um, I would have liked to have uh, a little better grasp of some of the uh, aspects of it but um all in all, uh, I'm pretty thrilled. Yeah, uh, I got a good, uh, I got a good result. Now, his color palette, he's really riffing off. We haven't got into the strong reds yet, but he's really doing kind of a riff off the green red thing. And of course, it's supported by the stormy uh, sky with the yellows and the and the blue. Um, in this painting, interestingly, I thought I'd crack open a tube of ultramarine blue, and that's the blue I used, um, which worked just fine, you know. And a lot of times I favor phthalo blue, but in this case, I thought, ah, oh, got that whole big old tube of ultramarine, I'm going to use that, and uh, it worked. It worked out well. Um, what else do I want to say? Well. Um, yeah, three hours, not bad. I just did a uh, study uh, yesterday, finished it, uh, of Georgia Ness. That, I think, took way more than three hours. I started to get, it started to get fiddly. Um, still got a good result, though, you know. And um, there's a little more, like, and this was pretty free-flowing, uh, loose and expressive, but never as loose as what you see here with Murphy. Yeah. And Murphy knew Ines. They used to go out and sketch together. I know that. Um, 
uh, it seems odd to me that somebody would not paint for eight eight months out of the year while in the midst of countryside but um, you know we'll take we'll take that site oh by the way that site I should give him some credit here hold on that was the Cooley Gallery um, we'll give them some credit um, even though I don't know if they're absolutely accurate in what they said I paint you know pretty much every day except today which is Sunday I take Sundays off and um, other than that, I'm either painting or working on something related to painting every day. And that's how you get good. That's how you get good. If you're here uh, because you want to get better at painting, uh, you get ready for the M. Francis lecture, which is that uh, as soon as you're done watching this video, if maybe you want to do a study after Murphy. Now, you could get a few more tools. Uh, you don't have to join the membership area. You could actually, there's a feature to slow this video down. You can find this image. I gave you the exact title of it. You could do this, or you could do he has got quite a few that were very similar. Um, you could grab any image and um, just get to work. Make start making a study. And I'll tell you what, you know, it might turn out well. It might not. Um, a lot of one of the big problems that I think painters uh, starting out have is that they do work that. Um, uh, fall short of uh, their aesthetic sensibility like you have the aesthetics to see something it's great and you have the desire to produce something great yourself and then when you take a crack at it um, you fail you fall you know well why is that well because you just you just don't have enough experience and you have to gain experience and and to gain that experience you really requires being patient with yourself and, and falling in love with the process more than the end result and so much uh, of uh, what we're taught in the modern world runs counter to that it tells us to be invested in the end result and to to hurry up and go out and sell it, try and sell our work and and get praise for the things we do and things like that really you, you should you should focus on is falling in love with painting um, make make painting like anything else you do in your life like walking or eating or sleeping um, or talking you know make it an expressive um, uh, make it an expressive expression of your life you know something that you do and you will find that if you do it uh, on a regular basis you'll start to get really good really fast and then um, if you can if you can maintain a daily practice uh, which you'll get into will be a total positive feedback loop um, which means you just keep building and building and building and that's not to say you won't do bad paintings sometimes you will um, but if, if you do don't get all hung up on that just put a board on the uh, on the easel and do another painting the next day and just keep going and get rid of those bad ones because you'll forget about them you don't need to uh, you don't need to get real focused on your failures failure is a part of the process and um, it's a very essential part of the process you will not be able to get extremely good at painting without failing a lot without going after things and what sort of things should you do well definitely go out and take your own photos and make paintings there in the members area I've got lots of uh, not lots but a fair amount of videos showing how I manipulate my own photography uh, to come up with a good result uh, something that will inspire me to do a painting or um, you can do studies after the masters don't only do studies after the masters though because that's going to make you a bit of a one-trick pony um, but I would say maybe every other painting you can make a, a, a study after the master or um, on other things you can make paintings that are sepia paintings or monochromatic paintings or um, some of you are not just into landscape only um, you could do still lifes uh, portraits landscapes I tend to favor specializing in landscape but I do some figurative stuff and it's really great when I do uh, and get back into doing landscape painting which I'm you know more proficient at I really feel like I feel lighter in the, uh, you know and also I, I was uh, after doing a study after someone like Murphy uh, I feel inspired and it reflects in my my own painting you know 
Anyway, I can see we're close to the end here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming around. Thanks for subscribing. Check out that members area. If you, hey, if you're a person with a lot of um, Thanks extra for capital, today. You know, I'll be back go to my website video. and check out the paintings there. I've uh, got some Take good care. paintings Stay and prices and uh, supporting this oh, artist who's going to be in the kitchen yeah. good with... Uh, the guys upstairs. Anyway, until I come back with another video, take good care, stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.